time for the ridiculous, and tonight a horse is a horse, of course, of course, unless, of course, that horse, of course, has sent the President of the United States into a fit of rage, then it's a whole frickin' thing. As you probably heard, there was a little bit of controversy at the Kentucky Derby this weekend. The first horse to cross the finish line, Maximum Security, which was definitely not named after the prison Michael Cohen checked into today, was disqualified on a technicality, and a horse named Country House, which probably was named after Michael Cohen's prison, was named the winner. And in keeping with this practice of having nothing better to do, out came a tweet from President Seabiscuit. Quote, the Kentucky Derby decision was not a good one. It was a rough and tumble race on a wet and sloppy track. Actually a beautiful thing to watch. Only in these days of political correctness, could such an overturn occur? The best horse did not win the Kentucky Derby. Not even close. All right. So as usual, I don't really know where to start. Now, Remember when they used to give Mr. Ed peanut butter so it would look like he was talking on TV? This is sort of like if Mr. Ed had a Twitter page and inhaled a jar of Skippy. And before we even get to the political correctness part, which I already prepared for by chugging three mint juleps, let me get this obvious point out of the way. The President of the United States seems to have a lot of time on his hands, and he can't even stand some horses getting uninterrupted airtime. He's got to be a part of every frickin' news cycle. He can't help himself. I'm, look, I know we know this already, but let me get something straight. President Trump is upset because the more popular candidate, or horse, the one everyone expected to win, didn't win because of an old-timey rule? Is it just me, or does this all sound vaguely familiar and like something the president actually supports in other non-equine situations? Anyway, let's just stipulate that when it comes to Twitter, especially on weekends or, you know, Monday through Friday, the president's saddle, it's a little loose, if you know what I mean. But still, this part about political correctness baffles even the savviest of Trump whisperers. I mean, sure, he probably thinks Secretary it was some U.N. hack and that national velvet is a, a gorgeous, classy American-made fabric that's getting screwed by tariffs. But it's tough to see why this particular go-to grievance was on his mind unless just before the derby he learned that black beauty was not only black but also Arabian. To be fair, it's not as if the president is unfamiliar with horses, or at least where they hang out and the bonds they form. He's been there, in the muck, in the straw, just him and his pal Vladimir Putin. And I got to know him very well because we were both on 60 Minutes. We were stable mates, and we did very well that night. There are no stables at, at 60 Minutes. I actually work there. There's no farm hands. There's no piles of hay. There's not even a green room where President Trump and Putin would have muzzled manes and munched on carrots. The question now is, does President Trump have any support for his claim? And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Vice President Pence is going to take a hard pass on anything involve a bu involving a bunch of limber jockeys and tight pants and boots carrying riding crops, talking around words like stud. So as ever, only President Trump can explain what following rules has to do with political correctness. Remember, rules are for losers, so if the horseshoe fits, wear it on the ridiculous.